Hi folks, in this video we're going to look at the origins and meaning of the word Jubilee and its possible relationship to the transit of Venus and Moses. Here we are, June the 5th, 2012, the sky over London, England, the sun rising with Venus closely approaching for it's an amazing transit across the face of the sun to complete the eight-year cycle of the pentagram as I demonstrated in an earlier video. Venus and the Sun are directly between the horns of the constellation Taurus the Bull and over a six-hour cycle on the 6th of the 6th, 2012, the Sun sets and crowns Taurus the Bull to complete the cycle of the pentagram. The origins of the word Jubilee comes from ancient Egypt in the act of paying homage to the pharaohs who fought themselves gods and goddesses. The Egyptian goddess Isis is ancient Egypt's representation of Venus. She has two cow-like horns with the sun disk displayed in the middle. They also held sacred the bull, depicted here with the sun disk and five pointed stars, which denote Isis, Venus, the pentagram. The bull was often coloured in gold or red. Many religions throughout time have held the bull or cow as sacred and still do. It would seem all of these images pointing to a place and maybe a time in our cosmos. Now let's look at the meaning of Jubilee in Judaism and Christianity. The early Hebrews worshipped the golden calf. In the book of Jubilees and many other Bible passages state when Moses went up onto Mount Sinai to collect the Ten Commandments for 40 days and 40 nights the Hebrews built a golden calf and stated, this is in the image of our God. And the people rejoiced and played the harp and blew the trumpets in jubilation. And when Moses returned, he smashed the golden calf and turned it into dust. A strange fact of history, certainly in most Gothic art, Moses adorns two horns. It is said this is due to a mistranslation, but I find that pretty hard to believe, since many artists and scholars have sculpted and painted Moses with horns for hundreds of years. It is written, whilst Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments, he was commanded and instructed upon the laws of the Jubilee a seven-year period when man must rest on the seventh year and seven times seven the 49th year and during the 50th year shall be a jubilee all debts and monies owed shall be wiped clean all slaves will be made free all men will be made free of debt and lands and property will be returned to the rightful owner and all people will rejoice in jubilation of the jubilee trumpets and horns will blow and harps will sound the jubilee law was set in place to prevent people from becoming debt slaves and to prevent the elite wealthy from holding the poor in bondage we could do with learning in our current times. The chauffeur, or known as the Jubilee Horn, the lyre, or the Jubilee Harp, almost reminds me of the golden calf horns. I guess most of you have heard of the Jubilee trumpets to be blown in jubilation. Well, all this is pretty much the same in early Christianity. 
but the true ideas and meanings had been long forgotten. Last time Venus completed the pentagram in its perfect alignment with the Sun was December the 6th, 1882, which is exactly the same date as the famous banker Rothschilds purchased the first chunk of Israel. Coincidence, you think? Adelaide, Australia, the famous Jubilee Walk and the controversial statue of Venus. John Dee's famous book, The Little Book of Black Venus, who was said to have invented the language Nokian, which enabled him to speak to the Archangel Michael, amongst others. Here we have the Venus horns, the Venus trumpet, so called in John Dee's book. I could go on endlessly connecting dots and showing you comparisons through our history and within our religions. But at the end of the day, where are we? These are just my opinions and you must make up your own mind. We're facing another jubilee, another alignment, 2012, a big day, perhaps a big year. All I can say is let's hope the sun sets and we're all safe. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please take care.